Alright, so we're going to continue from where we left off immediately from the last lesson. Alright, so we talked about the solutions being whether it's a bound solution and unbound solution and then it corresponds to really bound states or unbound states. Now we found out that for this potential, because the energy levels, the particle is not bound for all energy levels, it needs to be for all energy levels for it to be a bound state, it's actually an unbound state. Right, and we also talked about eliminating the coefficients. So uh, today we're going to proceed by something called, these things called uh, continuity, uh, continuity conditions and boundary conditions. Now, I don't want to move too much into the theory, but at least we can talk a bit about you know what we can do to these solutions once we find it. All right. Um, now the particle, okay, we write out the solutions like that, okay. That has to be a way or a method for us to find all these coefficients. All right, all these coefficients right here, or at least somewhat, okay. We can know we can anticipate. Maybe we can write them as a linear combination of the other because as you can see, there are six unknowns. If we manage to eliminate like say these two. Okay, based on uh, the, the reflection and the diverging solutions, we know, we know that they are unphysical, so we can eliminate them. We still have four uh, coefficients to really manipulate and see what we can do from there. And for us to proceed, we have this thing called continuity and boundary conditions. Okay, continui, continuity and boundary conditions. Now, the theory okay, is that we are allowed to apply these conditions because... Well, firstly, the wave function needs to be continuous. There can't be really a, a gap in the wave function, okay? Like you see, there's this gap over here. That would tell us that really we can't find a particle over there, but you know, that doesn't make sense. The other reason to explain it is this thing called the conservation of matter. Conservation of matter. All right, um, you know, even though we're dealing with quantum mechanics and when we take a me measurement, all right, our matter can't be destroyed even in the, in the microscopic world. Now, I don't want to touch that theory too much, but, you know, just basically it's the conservation of matter as opposed to something like the conservation of energy. Okay, so this continuity equations. Now, what do the continuity equations tell us? We can apply the continuity equations to these individual solutions, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, for a given um, energy, for a given case, okay? So when the energy is less than the potential, we can apply these continuity equations. And the continuity equations, in fact, are very simple. It just tells us that at a certain point, which I label as x0, okay? At a certain point, okay, where these two uh, equations meet, which is basically the x0 comes over here, they are going to be equal, so psi 1 at x0 is going to be equal to psi 2 at x0, and the first derivative in terms of x, okay, is also going to be equal. So we're going to differentiate psi 1 in terms of x, uh, put, uh, evaluate as psi 0, it's going to be equal to psi 2, uh, evaluate as psi 0, except for an infinite, infinite, infinity potential, infinite potential, more on that later. So as you can see, I can, I can apply the continuity equations to uh, these solutions over here, okay, and somehow write the coefficients nicely because, you know, this would allow us to write the, the coefficients in a neat way, as well as uh, applying them to psi 2 and psi 3, but this time evaluated at x1. Okay, so graphically, what does that mean graphically? Psi 1 is given as this solution over here, psi 2 is given as this solution over here, psi 3 is given as this solution over here. Where, does, where do the solutions meet? Well, we can see that the solutions meet when the potential changes, which is basically at uh, psi, uh, sorry, x0 and x1 one like so at this point and at this point right there right okay and at these points we apply the continuity equations to really write the coefficients or at least it's the first step of calculating the coefficients okay now as you can see right here we got two continuity equations all right um, and we can apply it to this set and this set so that makes uh, four equations right so if we eliminate these coefficients based on the unphysical solutions these continuity equations allow us to find a2, B2, B1, and A3. So these are what allows us to find that. Now, I mentioned in passing something called the boundary solutions, right? Boundary solutions. Now, I believe that these boundary solutions is just another name for the continuity equations, but we only apply them when we are dealing with bound solutions, okay, and it's at the end where the potential is higher than the wave function. So as we can see that really the boundary solutions only apply for the case where the energy is less than the potential because really we have a bound solution at this area over here from uh, minus infinity to x0 and from x1 to infinity. Okay, they occur really over here. The potential is higher than the energy so the solutions decay. Now, um, I just want to mention that I should have also mentioned this uh, before but this is actually, there's actually a proper name to call this one over here. Okay, this thing. This is actually called a classical turning point classical turning point. Now as you know, um, in classical physics, when we have the potential and the potential is an attractive potential, right? And when a particle goes through an attractive potential, it attracts the, the, the particle back. Okay, and that is why the particle turns back. 
Now, we can borrow that concept in quantum mechanics as well, call it a classical turning point. And it's really these classical turning points which bound the, the particle, okay, when we have a bound solution. So, when the case when energy is less than potential, these two are classical turning points. And these two classical turning points gives us a bound state for okay, the energy uh, less than pot the potential V0. Now, I should have said a, a bound solution, okay? But anyways, that's the point, classical turning point. So, at the classical turning points, we apply the boundary solutions. And I can also want to let you know that it is these boundary solutions, okay, if you believe it or not, gives us the discrete energy levels. Okay, now we're at least getting somewhere. Now, I did not mention this all up until now because when we you know say that the the energy is more than zero we don't know whether it's continuous spectrum or discrete spectrum you know but later as we shall find out in the infinite square wall yeah the infinite square well okay that when we write out the solutions okay e naught is is more than zero we write down the solutions we apply the continuity or the boundary conditions we get a certain equation we can anticipate it's a trigonometry function because trig trigonometry function is sinusoidal Okay, and that would allow us to find these discrete energy levels, right? So we start off with the energy, we don't know whether it's discrete or continuous yet, apply these conditions and see what we get from there, right? So I think that's uh, good enough, okay? Uh, just before we conclude, I just want to mention if we extend the potential to V1, okay? V1 over here like that, right? We need to have three cases because as we can see, the energy level E1 move up, but when we move up, it changes sign at this region over here, okay? But then when we move up again, it changes sign at this region over here. So that's by extending V1 to not be equals to V0. Okay, and lastly, if I extend the potential all the way to infinity, alright, this is what we finally call a bound state. Because the potential goes all the way to infinity for all energy levels, okay, infinity is over here, for all energy levels, it would be confined in a finite region. That's why we always talked about the bound solutions, the, the, the unbound solutions, but it's only when the potential is infinity we get a bound state. That's why we know that we get a bound state for an infinite square well potential. So this is where we stand. We are given the potential specified in the problem, okay, the various potentials that we have. We want to find the wave function given by the, the solutions to the showing the equation, okay, by separating the cases. And after that, we will find the energy by using the continuity and the boundary conditions. Alright? So what we're going to go through is stuff like the finite square well, the infinite square well, uh, stuff like, you know, potential step, the well, the potential barrier, and see all this phenomena that, you know, we have in quantum mechanics, you know, tunneling, how a particle can go through a potential, you know, and basically the discrete energy levels of the hydrogen atom. Right? So I think it's going to be you know, a good lesson from here and we're going to see uh, what we can learn from now.